Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for that extended applause to get us past the little bit there. <laughs> My uh, next guest is a best-selling author of a book uh, told, uh, a book told by me. <laughs> Words out of my mouth sometimes. <laughs> no, uh, she wrote uh, a book called I Was Told There'd Be Cake, and she wrote this book called How Did You Get This Number? <laughs> what are you, you don't even know what you're doing at. <laughs> She's a good friend of the show, the lovely Sloane Crossley, everybody. <laughs> Compliment you on your appearance, if that's not too kind of pushy of me. You look, you look really you're lovely. I mean, your orange that. shoes and then this wonderful I'm, thing. This wonderful thing. And the dress is nice too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly this arm. This arm is the this sexiest arm. arm I've ever seen. That's well, it's just it's the closest to you. I was going to compliment you on your socks. But They're tights, like actually. <laughs> they are. Yeah, yeah. I wear them because it's uh, hot. Oh, oh, right. They look it's, like you know the old painting. double bluff. Yes, exactly. Well, I do that all the time, actually. I always uh, sort of dress anti-seasonally to try to, like, I'll wear, like, flip-flops in the winter to try to trick myself. Trick yourself or trick nature? <laughs> trick nature. <laughs> trick myself into not having the flu. You're right. You, know, <laughs> you wear flip-flops. You live in New York. You can't walk around in flip-flops. Oh, because of the dirt? And pee-pee. And pee -pee. <laughs> I always think that when people have those dogs, the Shih Tzus, I know, the, it's funny. Yes. But it's like a mop that they're just walking along. Yeah, they're just like, it's like they take that thing, go, go and collect as many germs as you can. Then come back bring into the house. Bring them to the house, yeah. Yes, yes. And then actually preferably hop up on the bed and just... I liked when you did that. Do that girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good Lord, it's lovely to see you. Good to see yeah. you too. So you've been at the writing then? One of them lady writers. I don't I, know how I feel about that. I don't... <laughs> It's really, yeah, well, because of the disconnect between this and the, it's hard being a woman writer. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, think, I think it's hard being a writer Absolutely. sometimes. Well, it's insular, certainly. I mean, mm. because, I mean, I, I haven't been anywhere for a while. I'm going to New Orleans next week, actually. Really? For why? This is for a reason that people do not go to New Orleans in the middle of August, um, to write. Well, you'll stay indoors a lot, that's so, uh, yeah, yeah. That's actually similar to the, the Shih Tzu flip-flop theorem. Shih Tzu flip-flop? <laughs> <laughs> Forgotten bands of Woodstock. Yeah. That's the name of my jam band. Yeah. So you, you're going to stay in... Well, you know, I know somebody who does that, actually. A writer. A New York writer. Who? La Larry Block. Lawrence Block. That He goes to New Orleans Larry. and writes. Yeah, you know Larry? No, but I'm just saying you guys are... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's... Uh, right. No, I yeah. only know, I know Anne Rice lives down there. That's and right. My She's friend Matt here. Rich is down there, and that's who I'm... Oh, well, that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, you go and see Anne Rice, too. Have you met Anne Rice? Um, no. She it's... smells great. Does she? <laughs> like so whenever she's here, I have to tell her how great she wears this cologne or perfume or something. It's like, wow. I think you spend enough time, you know, writing about the undead. And you're like, I just want to smell like a rose. Well, maybe I that, just, yeah. That's all she writes a, a lot of very creepy stuff and, and such a yeah. warm, lovely person. And such, well, I was actually, I'm always surprised by that. Um, Chuck Palahniuk, who wrote Fight Club. Yes, he's been here, yeah, lovely. Just the nicest, nicest, nicest man. And you're but like, I have that, going on? I have the theory that people who write, like David Benioff, who writes uh, Game right. of Thrones. Yes. And have you read his book, City of Thieves? Yeah, I read that, oh, and when the nines so, roll over. Oh, he wow, he writes so dark, and he's such a, it's sort of friendly and seemingly, I don't know him that well, but he has a kind of positive. I think that it works in opposites. Like comedians who are very funny are usually dark, twisted, awful, desperate yeah. people. Desperate. But they're like, ah, ah, ah. Watch the birdie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay no attention. Crying, you crying. can't see my pain. <laughs> and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and are incapable of, of working in that. And, but people who write really dark stuff are usually, like Stephen King was here. What a lovely, friendly, well-adjusted human being. I'm a little worried, though, that this is leading towards my stuff is not that dark. I know. <laughs> so, so I suspect that you have. I am just. Yeah. Uh -oh. Yeah. I think you probably have a, a great uh, darkness. I feel like this should be a, a. We could join this into a therapy couch. Well, we could do a bit of therapy. <laughs> yeah, if you want. Certainly. Are you in therapy? You live in New York. You I should live be. In New yeah. York. Aren't, aren't you in therapy? Do you, well, you know, I actually do have a therapist. Yeah, me too. I do, and I like her. I like her a fair bit, but she talks more than I do. <laughs> 
Yeah, they shouldn't do that. Yeah. No, I love it, actually. Oh, really? Great. Well, I mean, I'm well, a talk show. Well, that's such a writer's thing, you know. I mean, that, like, right. go to go, oh, and just let her talk, and then you can take her and, and make her a character. And then every once in a while, I'll take her and make her a character. Yeah, just steal her did life. I start asking, so between this, this collection of essays, I'm working on a novel, and I finally started talking about the characters in the novel, because it always bothers me when people talk about their characters. It seems very self-important and self-serious if they talk about them like they're real. Well, um, they are real, though, aren't they? To you, sort of, kind of? To me, sort of, kind of, but at the same time, I know when to sort of keep it in the house and not, you know, go down the street and be like, mm. oh, Bob, there's no character named Bob, but Bob did the funniest thing the other day. And you're like, well, that's not a real person. Yeah, but did, <laughs> but did you ever write I a character? I could kill him tomorrow. I, well, yeah, but see, that's the interesting <laughs> thing about being a writer. <laughs> I, uh, I noticed, I was writing a story once about a woman in France, and I realized about uh, <laughs> a couple of days in that I, th I started to think, and I'd spent a lot of time alone, that um, <laughs> I started to think she was on to me and she knew that I was writing about her. Oh, wait, okay, so this is a real person. You no, were... no, no, this is a fictional person that I... Mm. <laughs> Maybe she was writing about you the entire time. Oh, pff, come on! <laughs> It's quite possible. Well, you don't you get emotionally attached to characters? Of course you do. Of course you do. Yeah. I mean, well, that's when you start figuring out. I think when you think, you hear this that people will start, you know, they'll start speaking to you. I'm like, that hasn't quite happened, but that happens in the negative where you're like, well, that person would never say that in a million years. Right. Okay. It happens sort of a negative. But what about the, the novel? I think intrigues me. What are you, what are you writing about in the novel? Because that's the one that that's you know that's punk rock right there. That's going to take over. You well, know? it's the kind of. <laughs> But my brain or the world? Yeah, no, you know, maybe not the world, <laughs> but certainly your brain. Certainly my brain. Yeah. No, it definitely takes over. It's it's actually, it's a it's a very different experience because you have to make up this. I always compare fiction to. I, I don't have this frame of reference, so I have no right for the following comparison. Doesn't matter. It's fine. It's all reference. Hmm. I fiction to me is like having a child. Right. Where everything about that is your fault. Everything, all the yes. DNA, yeah. the nature, the nurture, the spitting up, it is your fault. Um, whereas if you adopt a child, yes. part of that's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like nonfiction, you're can, basing... Can you, can you hold yeah. just a second? I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but just okay. hold just a second. Okay, that's fine. The views expressed by Sloan Crossley are in no way <laughs> uh, mine. Unless you agree with her, in which case they are. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. okay. Because you're, you're bouncing off the world. You write nonfiction. You know, some of the stuff is just a fact of the world we live in. If I write an essay about your, your snake mug. Yeah, but even if you write a piece of nonfiction about the snake mug, you, you still have a subjectivity about it. So it becomes, in some way, a, a perspective. And therefore, to me, it may be fictional. Like, what you think about my snake mug, right. you know, for example, this is not a pipe. You know what I'm saying, right? I'm agreed. Right, yeah, right, right. So, saying. you know, how you see it, how I see it, you know, your fact is my fiction, my, you know, come on, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to recuse myself of any responsibility, and you're not letting me. I'm not letting you. I'm not letting like you because like you're a Oprah. very, very, very intelligent human being <laughs> and a terrific writer. If you were just some celebrity tramp whore in a book, I would let you away with it, but you're not. <laughs> I'm so I'm so happy that you, the ing came after. Oh. <laughs> I really I thought I heard celebrity tramp whore. <laughs> or that, yeah. <laughs> I was really nervous. No, no, I'm very excited to read the novel. I'm excited. Well, I'm excited to do that, and then the novel will come out. You know, it'll we, come we have when some it comes. Time. You're you're catching catching me in sort of like promotional purgatory. That's Nothing, kind of think. that's where I live. <laughs> that's where you. <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever seen Defending Your Life? I have. I love that movie. Albert Brooks movie. <laughs> movie. I love that but movie. The past lives, does everyone, I wish everybody had seen it. Oh, yeah. Well. I wouldn't yeah. encourage them to stop watching right now, the show. But maybe once well, the show is over. Stop watching right now, now. And go and watch uh, Defending Your Life because we're out of time. Oh, well, there you go. So maybe this is good timing. Slow <laughs> <laughs> Crossley, everybody. Remember right now.